Well, there is a concept that takes a fundamental uh, a role in pressure, uh, in, in solids, which is not th th so important in, in solids, in fluids, but it's not so important in solids, which is the concept of pressure. And the first thing you have to learn is that there are different types of pressure, types of pressure. So pressure is not always the same. The name pressure is applied to very physically different concepts. And I would like to comment on that. Uh, Pascal, in the Middle Age, already, or the late Middle Age, uh, already formulated the, the Pascal's law that, that uh, in a fluid addressed, so a fluid like that, which is addressed at the point, no motion, no velocity, essentially, there is the pressure, said pressure, acts equally in all directions at a given point. That's something that is true for all fluids. We'll see why. Okay? What is this pressure? Well, that's the first definition of pressure. That is the hydrostatic pressure. So the definition of hydrostatic pressure is nothing else than that fluid, that pressure, that acts on fluids at rest, which is just a normal pressure. Okay? A normal stress, which in that case is called pressure, compressive stress, which in that case is, no pr is, no, is, is called pressure, and which is an addition called hydrostatic pressure. And it's denoted by P0, first notion. However, that same fluid can be subjected in other conditions which are not addressed to other magnitudes of normal stresses, which give rise to other concepts of pressures. So the first, the first, the first definition of pressure is the hydrostatic pressure which is the one in a fluid at rest, at rest, mathematically, the stress tensor that now is equal to minus, is a hydrostatic, mathematically, a hydrostatic uh, stress state, in which uh, we have a minus P0, in terms of normal stress, so negative compressive, times the unity, and that is the definition of hydrostatic pressure. Okay. Mean pressure. That's something that we already have introduced. That can be applied not only at fluids, but also at solids. Whenever we have a stress tensor, we can take the mean, the mean, uh, uh, the, the first invariant, the mean stress, which is the trace of the stress tensor, take the mean value, and change the sign, and that, that is what we call the mean pressure. And in principle, has to, it's something which is different because it can be applied to solids or to 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 continuum media which are subjected, not addressed, that are not addressed. So this is what we call the uh, mean pressure, and we'll denote it differently because in general they are different with p bar as p bar. Okay, so that's the second. In principle, different. We'll see later that there are relationships with them. And the third concept is the one of thermodynamic pressure. It's a completely different concept. In principle, in principle, it's not directly related to stresses. It's like more a thermodynamic concept, which appears in one typical equation, one of the equations that rule the behavior of the of the of the fluid which is called the kinetic equation of a state. That's a question that we visit in a minute that in principle relate the density of the fluid, uh, the temperature of the fluid, and an additional scalar parameter which is called the thermodynamic pressure. And that will be denoted by P. So we have three P. The hydrostatic pressure, the mean pressure, and the uh, thermodynamic pressure. That, in principle, are equal. Now we'll prove that in the fluid address, they are the same. And that's why, in general, we have the trend to mix the three concepts and consider that they are the same, which is not the, the real case. OK, let's just uh, talk a little bit about more about the, that equation. That equation that plays a fundamental role in fluids, that is the kinetic equation of a state, well, it, it admits some specificities, specificities in the sense that, in some cases, that can be independent of temperature. 
OK? So in that case, that equation is, looks like that, a function that relates the density and the pressure, from which pressure can be isolated, and we can obtain the pressure as a fa the thermodynamic pressure as a function of the density. That is something that we will see, a concept that we'll see many times here, which is the concept of barotropic fluid. A barotropic fluid, we have introduced some words already, yeah? uh, viscose, immiscid, now that barotropic, what is a barotropic fluid? Technically, a barotropic fluid is a fluid in which pressure, thermodynamic pressure, depends only on density, not on the temperature. Okay? And that, that, why is that important? Because as we'll see, that simplifies very much the problem. That allows, I anticipate it, uh, splitting the problem into two parts, which can be solved separately, the mechanical and the thermal part. One specific case of that is when the uh, dense, that equation even doesn't depend on pressure. So finally, we uh, find that this doesn't depend neither on the temperature, a barotropic fluid in which the, the, the kinematic equation, uh, kinematic, uh, the kinetic equation of a state uh, doesn't depend neither on temperature nor on pressure. So it's like that. A fraction of rho, typically rho minus k equals zero, or rho equal k being a constant, being a constant, that is called a compressive fluid. And that is a very specific case, but very important for us because one of our main fluids, which are the, the water, water, is incompressible. So, barotropic fluid, a fluid where press the thermodynamic pressure depends only on temperature and it doesn't depend on, on uh, so it depends only on density and it doesn't depend on the temperature. And in a specific case, the case in which that dependent is such that the pressure, the, the, the density is constant, that's a specific case, is the one of incompressible fluid. Well, the, I mean, you know, all what we do in science and engineering are approximations. So, for instance, I say water is something that is completely inviscid. No, it's not true. Water has some viscosity, which is small. If you just try to land uh, 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 an earth, uh, uh, a plane on, on, uh, impacting on the, on the water, it behaves like a solid. Why? Because at high speed, at high speed, the viscosity or, or the stresses introduced by the little viscosity, little viscosity uh, in water is not, is, is, are not negligible. But at regular speeds, as the ones that we deal in our problems, then water can be considered invisible because the viscosity is very small, not zero, very small. So this is the same. Is there dependency of any fluid, the viscosity, on temperature? Yes. There is always a dependence. And maybe there are dependence on other variables, but the variables. But for our physical, phenomenological approach, as engineers and as scientists or as physicists, to the reality of fluids, in our cases, in general, there exist, and typically, our fluids in civil engineering, the viscosity of the water in a reservoir, in a channel, water in a pipe, on temperature is negligible. Negligible. So I don't know how much it can be, but I mean, out of uh, order of magnitudes, the, the of, of relevant order, order of magnitudes. So there exists in the sense that we can do, we can do reasonable approaches to that for our purposes as engineers without committing great mistakes, assuming that there is a, a barotropic fluid. Okay? That's always, that reasoning to that can be applied to everything else. Okay? We just do hypotheses, and these hypotheses restrict our field of application to a certain range. But in this range, the hypothesis is correct. 